Let's fix your Windows updates. That's what this video is about because guess what? The two ways I see on the internet and YouTube just drive me crazy. I've uh, been a system admin of Windows servers for 20 plus years and I gotta tell you, the things I see about Windows 10 just drive me crazy. One, you can leave it alone and basically Microsoft rules your life and your computer and can cost you hours of your day and productivity time. And the second way is to disable Windows Update, which is absolutely horrible with ransomware and viruses out there. Both these ways suck. So we're not gonna use either one. We're gonna go and actually show you how I set up a business environment so you can do the exact same steps. Now, I will be covering multiple methods in this way, so if you're on pro or you're on home, I got you covered. So with that, uh, let's get into it. I do have a special bonus at the end that will kind of dictate active hours and those types of things, so check that out too. Uh, and with that, let's get on the desktop and start configuring our Windows. Now with Windows, I did create this on christitus.com, that's my website, uh, you'll see Windows updates dash security only. Link is in the description. I do this just so you can easily follow along if you're more of a visual or a text guy. And also when you get down into like some of the registry edit methods, there's gonna be times where you just wanna do a copy paste. So you can just double click these and then just copy them. That way you don't mess up when you actually are doing these registry edits as it's really important to get these spelled exactly right with the case. So with that, let's jump over to the Windows box and start configuring this. We're gonna start with the Start menu down here. We'll right click here, hit Run, type gpedit.msc. This is our local group policy. This is for pro users only. So if you're on Windows 10 Pro, this is for you. Under Local Group Policy Editor, I'm gonna just drag this over. We'll hit Administrative Templates. Windows components, scroll all the way down to Windows updates, expand that out, Windows updates for business. This is where everything resides that we need to change. Preview builds and feature updates. I need to explain this real fast. When it comes to updates in Windows, there's two types of updates. Preview features and, and feature updates, those are just kind of extra garbage that gets thrown in with Windows. I call it garbage, but some people, I guess, like the Microsoft Store. I don't know. There's some weirdos out there. <laughs> but needless to say, this is just a bunch of uh, bloat, I consider. And if I'm using a Windows minimal install, which I've done a video on, if you're familiar with that, um, this is how I make sure it doesn't bloat itself back up by installing features I've removed from my Windows as my windows, if I go into my start menu, you'll see this is just a gaming box, but there's literally no Windows components. There's no Windows apps. There's nothing in here. It's a very, very clean system. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that video out as it's a good way to, one, have a very clean Windows. But let's say you, you have all the features you want on your Windows, which pretty much everyone does. And you wanna make sure you don't get extra stuff. Uh, this is basically a good way to do it. We come into preview builds and feature updates, hit enabled, go here, make sure it's on semi-annual channel. Now, if you're on an older version of Windows 10, it won't say release preview, it'll say semi-annual channel targeted. Um, and that's basically just release preview. That's a shorthand. Uh, and Microsoft has some weird naming schemes. This is one of them. But you always want just semi-annual channel with nothing after it. This basically says, hey, all you guinea pigs out there, you go ahead, test all the features, and I don't want it until it's been tested and proven for four months on the open market. So there's a bunch of different channels there. This is the best one that pretty much every business is on. And then below that, I delay to 365 days. So not only does it wait four months, but then it waits another 365 days before I get feature updates. This is not security updates. I wanna go ahead and specify this. This is extra garbage. Microsoft Store stuff, um, Cortana. Yeah, all, all the fun stuff that just kind of bloats up Windows 10. Um, and uh, we don't need any of that. So I just leave it on this and I have a very clean system. The second one is quality updates. This is security updates. Very, very important you have this enabled. This is why I say don't disable updates, but make sure you're getting the quality updates or security updates. And I do defer these four days. And you might be thinking to yourself, that's an awful weird number you picked there, Titus. And the reason being is 
all these updates get released on Patch Tuesday. Almost every Tuesday, Patch comes out from Microsoft, people throw it in there, and, well, that just kind of stinks. Because sometimes those patches break systems. So with four days, it puts it all the way to the weekend. So when Microsoft releases, releases a bad patch, which it's happened a lot, and it's happened a ton lately, um, I don't really get these patches. Because usually they'll release it that first day, and a lot of problems will happen. And by usually the second or third day, they pull that patch back. And then definitely by the weekend, when my system goes to check for that update, it's either one been fixed or two already been pulled. So I only get quality, good, proven updates. So that's the rationale behind four. But these steps are what I have. Again, you can follow along with the guide if uh, you uh, need any question of whatnot so you can refer back to it without rewinding. So with that done, let's go to the home side. This is the registry side of things. We'll just go back into here, go to start, run, and I'm just right clicking on that start button, typing registry edit, or reg edit from reg edit it's actually already in the folder let's back out of this from local machine come down to software come down to microsoft from microsoft come down to windows update just down down all the way and then from update expand it come into ux and then go to the settings folder so just follow that entire folder structure to get here the three things we need to know branch readiness level this is actually set at 20. This is a, something I need to explain about registry as if you're kind of a noob in the registry, uh, a lot of people get in here. By default, it's set to hexadecimal. You'll get yourself in trouble when you accidentally set something to, let's say this needs to be at 20, and then you look at the actual value and it ends up being 32. That's no bueno. So make sure you're always set it to decimal and then set your value. So decimal value. And with that, we set the branch readiness level. That's the semi-annual channel I was talking about, which is 20 at a decimal. And uh, again, copy paste these from my website as you don't want to misspell any of these caps. It's very important you get this exactly right. And when you're adding the value, just new D word is what you need. And I can just kind of show you that real fast. Um, We'll just delete this value and just recreate it. So I'll go new D word. If you don't have these values, just do that. New D word, type this in, hit enter, hit decimal, and then hit the value 20. Just like that, it didn't hurt anything to just kind of recreate that for you, but I just wanted to show it. Same thing for these two values. Feature updates, I just talked about 365 days is what I recommend for the feature update delay period. And then for quality updates, setting it to four days. Again, when you open it up, you'll see important to do decimal. In that instance, it didn't matter. But in this instance, you'll notice it does matter because the hexadecimal is 16D or the decimal is 365. And with that, we're done with actually setting the updates, but now we need to set our active hours. And active hours is something that's just kind of interesting. So let's quit out of our registry editor, go into start, the little settings cog, updates and securities, and change active hours. First thing on this screen, make sure you never ever automatically adjust. Can't emphasize that enough. Microsoft is notorious for picking bad times to update, so never ever put this to on. And then we set it to an 18 hour period. Some people miss that this isn't the actual time that Windows updates, this is actual times Windows won't update. So it depends on how you read this, but it's important to know that. So I'm telling Windows the start time between 8 a.m. and 2 a.m., I never want an update. So it will only update my system between 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. in that six, period, six hour period of time. So, so important to follow that. Uh, again, don't go past 18 hours as it'll default and then it'll just do an eight hour block, which is really, really bad. Uh, some people try and do like, you know, 23 hours or something here and it just ends in disaster. Always do 18 hours like I did here. If you're unsure, uh, refer back to this screen in the video. But with that, hit save and we're basically done with Windows updates.
So there you have it. Uh, I absolutely love this as far as any time I'm using Windows. I typically only use it for my game streaming box here as I'm more of a Linux desktop user these days. But I still love playing like some Call of Duty Warzone and those types of games. And, uh, you know, easy anti-cheat doesn't work all that well on Linux uh, for certain games. So that's why I have this box. But it's really important when it comes to these residential box, you set it up like a business. Because in a business environment, I use these rules every single time. And everything I've seen on the net uh, either says leave it alone, always run updates, or do this. It's really important just to grab security updates because the rest of these updates from Microsoft are just a bunch of garbage that bloats up your computer, slows you down, just overall a bad idea. And uh, these are literally best practices from Microsoft. So you're not going to get in trouble. It's not like you're disabling updates. You're only getting the good security updates. And guess what? These updates are small and your, your system's going to update so much faster. So just a great all around thing to do. And I can't emphasize enough how much it helps uh, as far as when I'm in Windows. Uh, I won't rage because I go to reboot and then all of a sudden it's doing an hour or two hour long feature update. Uh, because these are the long updates that really hurt people. And uh, with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.